Hello everybody, my very dear audio friends, I'm Paul, welcome back to my studio Warsaw Poland and to my humble YouTube channel, a place to talk about music mixing, mastering, sound design, game audio and sometimes even more. Guys, I know Pro R2 by Fab Filter is out, but no, I will not review this plugin. And no, don't get me wrong, I don't think there's anything wrong about it. It's a great sounding reverb, a terrific piece of software. Uh, by Fab Filter, but it never was my thing. I never was a fan of this GUI, this workflow, though really it's a cool plugin, but reviewing it for you would be a bit dishonest because I know I will not use it. I've seen it, I checked out the features and stuff. No, please take a look at this plugin somewhere else and let anybody else review it for you. I hope you're fine with it. But there is a cool topic, a large one, from the topics I'm afraid to shoot because I never have enough time, but this is the day. I heard many times online and also from my friends, hey Paul, why Gulfos didn't suppress my resonances? Or hey Paul, why Sooth 2 did not balance out my master? <laughs> because these are different tools, they do different stuff. And you know what? Seriously, among my friends, among producers, um, there's a lot of mess and a lot of fuss. What is what and how auto EQs work, how balancers work, how, how resonance um, suppressors work and that they are different tools that do different stuff. I can see that many people don't get it, don't know it. So I thought that explaining it in a short video would be a cool idea that's gonna help you produce and mix better music. So this is the topic for today. The differences between tone balancers, auto EQs and noise suppressors. When and how to use them. Let's go. Before we start, let me show you our session for today. I got three tracks with three sound examples and we are going to talk about auto EQs separately, then resonance suppressors, then tonal balancers. That's it, we're ready to go. And first, auto EQs. Auto EQs are generally regular equalizers but adjusting the curve for your sound to a predefined target. It can be a result of machine learning process like it is with uh, Smart EQ3, for, exa for example, but it can be as well uh, sculpted manually and put into the plugin in any manual, let's say, human way. And generally, this is simply an equalizer that uh, tries to get your sound as close to the target as possible. As I said, I'm personally using Smart EQ 3 usually, but that's not the only um, auto equalizer out there. You're going to meet, for example, Melda Auto Equalizer, Neutron 4 Equalizer, or Stabilizer inside Ozone Suite by Isotope in the shape mode. This is important. Shape mode of the stabilizer does the auto EQ. These are not the only um, auto EQ tools out there, but let's say this is the group of most popular, most used ones, let's say. And I'm going to present to you how it works, one of them, Smart EQ3, on a simple piece that I've got here. Yeah, this is like aggressive house uh, piano style, but I still would like to change the balance mm, of this. I would make it to sound a bit more natural like piano sound, but let's say I'm not too experienced in EQing things, so I can choose piano preset here and I can learn this material. Yes, that's, that's exactly what I was thinking about. 
uh, exposing the low end a bit, maybe without the mids being so exposed, and taming um, the highs a bit in a regular EQ way. This is like an EQ uh, curve simply, but also I can make it dynamic in Smart EQ 3, so it's gonna react in time a bit also, but still it's gonna behave like a moving dynamic EQ. That's it. And this is generally how auto EQs work. Of course, each plugin is different, but this is the general concept of them. So they are a cool basic mixing tool, like your go-to EQ, but with a serious assistant, let's say. Now, resonance suppressors. Resonance suppressors do essentially different job than auto EQs. While auto EQ generates a curve, a target curve for your sound that can boost or attenuate frequencies, resonance suppressors take the resonances of your sound, the peaks, the frequency peaks, uh, deformance, uh, whatever you name them, uh, they find them and they simply apply the opposite. So they take care of some harsh spikes in your sound, let's say. And my go-to is, I think, the first resonance suppressor on the market, which was Soothe. Now I'm using it in version Soothe 2. I still think it's unbeatable. It's the best uh, one, but there are more, of course. BSAC 3 by TB Pro Audio, Smooth Operator by Baby Audio, Stabilizer uh, from Ozone, but this time in cut mode, or Resso by Mastering the Mix. But as I said, let's jump into Sooth 2 to grab the idea how resonance suppressors work. This is the plugin, and this is not an EQ curve. This is the curve for mm, suppressing the resonances. Maybe when I play it to you, it's gonna be um, mm, understood most. This is the amount of uh, resonance taming I can uh, set per frequency. This is, let's say, the default. This is something different. Uh, only the resonances, the spikes in frequencies are taken into account. Of course, I can retweak it a bit. Of course, when I uh, set sharpness and selectivity to lower values and I tweak depth like to larger amounts, then it's gonna do very smooth um, dips, uh, dynamic dips in sound. So it starts um, acting a bit um, like some kind of a balancer, but still this is a resonance suppressor set to work very wide band. Let's let's say, mm, yeah, and that's it. This is the basic idea behind resonance suppressors. And as with auto EQs, the idea is the same for all the plugins, though they might have some different functionalities, different approach to some details and GUI and general user experience. Next, tone balancers. Some people say for some reason that I don't understand that tone balancers are something between auto EQs and resonance suppressors. They are actually essentially not because they are not take they are not taming your spikes, they are not adjusting your sound to a predefined curve you can select, you can choose per each instrument let's say and adjust your source to the target. They have the target, but this is a very general global tone target, let's say, 
suitable for mastering mainly, not only probably, but mainly for mastering, to add depth, clarity to the general picture of your sound. Guys, and what I'm using, also the first one on the market, I think, and still unbeatable, it's Gulfos by South Theory. There is some static algorithm behind it. It's not auto EQ, it's not any AI, it's a static algorithm based on many years of research. Only Sound Theory knows what's there, I think. But I'll show you how it works. And remember, of course, Gulfos is not the only one. I use also sometimes Teori by Voxengo, which behaves quite similarly and gives me quite similar results, I would say. But there's more. There's Hornet 31 Mark II, which is a 31 band um, equalizer, but you can set it to auto. And no, it does not behave like an auto EQ. It behaves way more like a tone balancer, like a psychoacoustic processor, like Gulforce, and especially Teori, I think. Also, ozone module called Clarity should be counted in, and Waves Factory Equalizer. It's got a name of Equalizer, but it's a tone balancer. I reviewed this plugin on my channel here. The name of this plugin doesn't really help, right? Anyway, let's jump into Gulfos now. Now I've got a loop from a full track that I would like to rebalance a bit, give it more depth, dimension, and clarity. Simply, this is Gulfos on uh, default settings. <laughs> Yeah, it might look that it's jumping like crazy, but the effect is very subtle, uh, as you could hear. And exactly, I wanted to remove some of the mod uh, somewhere below 200 hertz, and then I wanted the tops to become a little, a little bit more crispy, maybe dynamic. And this is what Gulfos did for me. Teori would approach this a bit differently with very similar sonic results. And as for Clarity, for example, or Hornet uh, 31 Mark II, I don't know because I have not tried them. You should try them yourself. But in general, they are meant to improve uh, the psychoacoustics, the reception of your sound in a very subjective way, making it more pleasant, making it more cohesive, more balanced. And they are some sort of dynamic equalizers, but surely they are different tools than auto equalizers than I talked about before. And guys, that's it. I hope this short material is going to help you a bit. And let's sum the things up. Yeah, for many people, for many newcomers, uh, beginners, aspiring music producers, mm, finding what's what in the world of auto dynamic suppression world is difficult seriously i see it online a lot a lot of my friends are asking me personally paul what should i use to balance my master pa paul why um teori didn't get rid of my resonances and stuff so yeah i thought uh, recording this video is a really good idea and i had a feeling that i can explain it to you in a short a really um, comprehensive, let's say, way. And I just hope I succeeded. Uh, if you like this material, please like it. If you didn't, comment on it and tell me what you liked and what you didn't like, because I love discussing things with you down below. I'll see you very, very soon, my audio friends. Take care. Bye.